Alright guys, welcome to another video. This one is on completing the square. So what we're going to do is we're going to warm up by uh, finding half of the middle of the term, squaring it, and adding it to the expression. So if I go ahead and take half of 8, so if I take half of that, half of 8 is 4. I'm going to square that amount to get 16, and I'm going to add it to the expression. So my new result, after I've done that, would be uh, x squared plus 8x uh, plus 16. Okay, so uh, I'm going to definitely say that you will see this thing format again. I'm adding the plus sign here just to show that we added to the to the zero uh you should get used to this we're going to see this again um but uh simple enough all right so completing the square we're going to be able to solve quadratics using the completing the square method so what is completing the square so if we can make a quadratic equation where one side is a perfect square we can easily find the roots by taking the square root of each side so let's take a look at this equation here x squared plus 8x minus 4 so we're going to solve this. That's finding the roots, OK? So when I said find its roots, uh, we are doing that right here. Find the roots. We're solving this, OK? So we are going to force one side to be a perfect square. The left side, obviously, because it already has the, the x squared on it. This method of forcing the existence of the perfect square is the completing the square. So how it works. Step one. Be sure that the coefficient of the highest power is 1. Okay, so if it's not, divide both sides of the equation by whatever coefficient is there to reduce it to 1. Uh, in our test equation, x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals 0. Uh, the leading number is 1, so we're good. We, we don't have to do anything else. Uh, step 2. Move the constant term to the right side. So here's my constant term. So we're going to take this and we're going to move it out of here by adding 4. And so when we do that, we get x squared plus 8x equals 4. So then the third step is to actually complete the square. So we're to find the needed value to make the perfect square trinomial, take half of the coefficient of the middle term, the x term, square it, and add that value to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to take half of 4. I'm going to square it. And add 16 here, and because it's an equation, I'm going to add it to the other side as well to keep my equation balanced. And notice how this little graphic here kind of looks like a square. So that's what I always think about when I think about completing the square. I think about making and completing a square. So uh, past that, okay, we're then going to be tasked with factoring this. OK, so the whole reason we're completing the square so that we can factor that left side of the equation and it factors really nicely. Um, so what we're factoring that one into is X squared plus 8X plus 16 equals 20. Right. So we can factor that into its two components of uh, we can factor it into ooh, the fonts too big. It would be X to the f X plus four times X plus four equals 20. I want to just reduce my font size here. It'd be uh, x plus 4 times x plus 4 equals 20, not 10, 20. So what's nice about that is that I can then rewrite x, to x plus 4 times x plus 4 as, I'm going to space this out really quick, as x plus 4 squared. Now that I have this x plus 4 squared, I can take the square root of both sides and solve. So I take the square root of x plus 4 squared, and I take the square root of 20. What happens is I get x plus 4 equals positive 4.47, because 4.47 times 4.47 will, in fact, give me 20. Or then I have to consider that there's this negative version, x plus 4 equals negative 4.47. So I have a positive version, and I have a negative version. And then once that's the case, I'm just going to solve them the same way. I'm going to subtract 4, subtract 4 on both sides of the equation. And then uh, I get two answers, x equals 0 0.47 or x equals negative 8. 
0.47. And that is how you complete the square. So here's an example. So I'm going to run through my step-by-step -step process, OK? So if you look back, step one said, make sure that this is 1x squared. OK? And it is. So we're good to go. Step two was get the coefficient, go to get the constant term over to the other side. So if you do that, OK, you get x squared minus 6x. And I'm going to leave a space here, OK, uh, equals 7. So now I'm actually going to go and complete the square. I'm going to take half of this, negative 3. I'm going to square that amount. And I'm going to add it to both sides of the equation. So negative 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 over here. And I'm going to add 9 over here. So what I come up with is 2 equals... Uh, I come up with an equation uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 16. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I have to set about factoring this. What's nice is the factors will always be uh, x minus this amount or x plus this amount, whatever it is, positive or negative, every time. So whatever this number is, is going to be the, f the amount that goes for your factors. So I'm going to switch to text. So minus 3 is going to be the factor. So I can rewrite this side of the equation as x minus 3 times x minus 3. And if you FOIL it out, you'll see that that's completely true, equals 16. So now you want to rewrite this uh, side of the equation since you're multiplying the same thing by itself. So you're multiplying x minus 3 by itself. That would be the same thing as x minus 3 squared. Uh, still equal to 16. Six got a little wacky. Okay, so now you're going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to draw my square root symbol in here. Draw my square root symbol in here. So uh, what ne happens next, I'm going to continue over here. Uh, I get x minus 3 is equal to, so the square root of 16 is 4. But I also have to consider, okay, remember that there's a positive version and a negative version. So I also have to consider that x minus 3 is equal to negative 4. Because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. So I can solve these the same way by adding 3 to both sides. So I get x equals 7. Or I would get x equals negative 1. So those are the two solutions to this quadratic equation, the two roots. Easy enough. So let's take a look at another. All right, so solve by completing the square. So x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0. So we know that this is 1x squared. We're good. I'm just going to start by just moving the 20 to the other side right away. So it's x squared. So I'm going to show a little less work on this one, guys. x squared plus 8x equals positive 20. So now, if you do the whole, you know, uh, drawing the square with arrows, half of 8 is 4. Square that is 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. So plus 16 and plus 16. This number here is going to be the number that I put in for factors. Okay, so I know I get x plus 4 because it's positive 4 times x plus 4.
equals 36. Okay, so I can rewrite that left side of the equation as x plus 4 squared. But uh, it's the whole parentheses squared equals 36. So then the next step is to take the square root of both sides. So square root. So I get x plus 4 equals 6. And then remember that I do have to consider. So there's a positive version. And I've got to consider the negative version. Or x plus 4 equals negative 6. So solving these the same way, I get x equals 2 when I subtract 4. Or uh, if I subtract 4 over here, I get x equals negative 10. Okay, let's take a look at some other possible examples for completing the square. Here I have solve using the completing the square method. So what if there's no end term? So what I'm going to do is first make sure that uh, this side, I'm going to move the 4x over here. Okay, so I've got x squared. Okay, and in order to get the 4x away from over here, I would have to subtract it. That's how I'm going to eliminate it. So I'm going to subtract it from over here. So x squared minus 4x equals 0. Now, truth be told, I look at this side of the equation and I see that these both have an x in common. I honestly think that uh, I could do the greatest common factoring uh, to solve this. Okay, but let's pretend that I forgot the greatest common factoring method. I can still complete the square. So I'm gonna, okay? Half of four is two. And then we're gonna square that. It's four, and we're gonna add it to the equation. So x squared minus four x. And it's negative two, but we square negative two and we get four equals, or plus four equals, and then I have to add it over here as well, four, okay? So we know that half of negative 4 is negative 2. So my two factors would be x minus 2, not times, minus, times x minus 2 equals 4. So we can write that as the product. Uh, we can write that as being x minus 2 squared. equals 4. When we take the square root of both sides, okay, we would get uh, x minus 2. x minus 2 equals 2, so that's the positive version, or x minus 2 is going to equal negative 2. So adding 2 to both sides, scroll down a bit, sir. Adding 2 to both sides, um, you're going to get x is equal to 4. Or uh, this one, x is going to be equal to 0. So uh, that would be how you could do it using completing the square if you forgot GCF factoring. And finally, we're going to solve for x here using completing the square. So. Uh, all the criteria have been checked, okay? It's x squared over here. Um, but I'm just going to move the 1 over here, and I'm going to complete the square while I'm at it, okay? So x squared plus 6x. And I know half of 6 is 3. Squared is 9. I had to subtract 1, so it would have been negative 1. Negative 1 plus 9 is positive 8. So I know that the factor I used was 3. So I'm going to skip right to the part where I do x plus 3 squared equals 8. I have to take the square root of both sides. 
So x plus 3 is equal to the square root of 8. Or x plus 3 is equal to the negative square root of 8. Okay, and I solve it the same way. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So one of my answers is equal to, so it's going to be a complex answer uh, in that it's not able to be simplified. Uh, it's going to be the square root, what an ugly square root, so I'm going to redo that. The square root of 8 minus 3 on the outside, or, and then the other one would be x is equal to uh, the negative square root of 8 minus 3 on the outside. So those are my two solutions. So that is how your answer should look if you do not have a nice square number on this side of the equation. Okay, guys. So that's it. That's uh, completing the square. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.